on the chat list uh, the uh, the text that we're doing now. It's page Kuf Vav, if you see it. I hope you all have it, because uh, I want to read this inside. Okay? Let's let's start rolling with this. And here it goes. Uminyan liinyan, moving from topic to topic, Ishta ve'er gam kem, one should also explain how naga l'chol adam, how proper uh, behavior of each person by sakav in his business. You saw this is based on Pi'ala Pasuk B'Gechad Rosha, of the idea of the, of the uh, shaving of the head of the Ephastor, which we explained in Ruchnius, what does this mean? B'Ruchnius, Gamken Giluch HaSarot B'Tzichim Giluch. The idea behind shaving, oh, hi, there, uh, uh-huh. shaving, shaving uh, the hair, which is not in places where it's appropriate to shave it, as we explained at the time, what does this mean? That there's what we call Mosros HaChachma. It's not the Chachma itself, but the added uh, Chachma in a lower level. For example, we discussed Sifas full and Shatamidei Chachamim. On one hand, and on the other hand, you know, the uh, the hawking in the back of the shul. <laughs> the other hand, this is Mosros HaChachma. It's not people living in intelligence, using their intelligence for things which are which are which not directly intelligent, such as a very intelligent person, the, the idea that even when he talks about Sikhus Kulun, there's always something to learn in that. The flip side, you have people which spend their time, you know, in, uh, I think it's called hocking, right? H-O-C-K-I-N-G or something like that. It's it, it's a profanation of the word hockey, I think. I don't know where it comes from. Whatever, it means wasting time. Okay, hacking. Dvarim she'em bem to elas, as the Rambam describes in Pirkei Avos, and the Mishnah of Lo Matzati the Guf Tov Elashtika. He actually categorizes um, five categories of speech, and uh, he comes out to a thing that basically twenty percent of speech is something which you should really be doing. Uh, maybe uh, the idea is something which is a mitzvah or something which is ratzui, which is worthwhile. The rest of it, including as he says, hacking, you're just wasting time. Says you should try your best to um, don't 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 don't, don't, don't use your power of speech for things which are meaningless. So this is the idea of most of the chachma. You have the idea of not the chachma, but chachma taken down either to a lower level or sometimes even to the lower level. But there's wisdom in it that we should all learn from. I mean, I learned a lot from following my rebbe and see how they reacted to certain things. It's what we do when we date. <laughs> when you date, you want to see how a person reacts to certain situations, and you understand what is the value system in them through that reaction to certain situations. That's a Mosro Sachachma, which can be very positive. The flip side can be quite negative. So he says there are places where such people we should shave off the Mosro Sachachma because they, are, they, they can be negative. That's what we discussed in previous classes. So now let's go to the third line. Hi, new. what does this mean in our the context of business? That which man spends a lot of time and really spends a lot of intense effort of thought and, and emotional involvement in his business, the Masal Matan in negotiations. He does more than what he really needs. He just he's into this idea of uh, accumulating money. And sometimes he doesn't really think, hey, what's the goal? What for? Like, uh, no, what about spending quality time with your wife? I don't know about that. What about spending quality time with your children? What, what about what about spending quality time with yourself? Uh, that, that's something that somehow people forget. They get so involved in the world of business and they almost forget that they exist as people. I mean, I, I have a friend with the poor guy. Even when he's on, I went with him once on vacation. He was on the phone the whole time. You know, he's a contractor and then he's doing business. Can't you? Like, let's just play golf. For goodness sakes, you stop it. It was impossible. This is called the Maestro Sachachma, which is Matrid Asma Yotzer Midai. Now, what does this all mean in Avodis Hashem? So, Bir Adavar, to explain this, is he makes see the post success, as you know, in Dvorim Tesvav, Uvarach Hashem Alokecha, and God will bless you, Bechol Asher Tase, in all that you will do. God conditions the bracha first with our activity. He doesn't just throw manna from heaven. He expects you to do something. Then there will be bracha in it. One must comprehend and understand. 
why is there a precondition you have to do something? Why is it that God wants us first to do business? Then God will bless him with abundance. And he will give him the sustenance for himself and for his family. Why? Isn't it true that we all have this idea of the, the mezonos of people, our kotsu bearers that measured out between Rosh and Yom Kippur, as the Gemara says in you, Beitza, he quotes it, Kimamar Chazal, Mezonotav Shel Adam, Ketuvim Lo Mi Rosh Hashanah Vad Yom Kippurim. They're already set there. They knew you know how many dollars and cents you're going to make. Umi Achar Shem Ketuvim, and since they already set aside, they know there's a measurement. Yom Ken Lichora Gam Im Lo Yasuk Masal Matan, Yelo Parnasato, Bahai Sharei Meashik Katsav Hashem Barach Vadai Yikayem. If God said, I'm giving this to him, is he now going to regret it? That's a famous passage in Bamid Rechav Gimel. Does God, God, you think God is one that says and doesn't fulfill? He doesn't. That's the passage. God is not a, a sapient which will lie. If he says it, it's going to happen. More than that, not only Luchari, he should be getting it whether he's Osek or not, the more he's Osek, it won't help. Because if he's the idea, you're going to get it because of Kitzvah. So what is the, the theological meaning of doing what we're doing by going to work? That's what I want to understand. Why bother? Let's try to understand. So this is what he's going to, to explain. But then he's going to ask another question, which is the much more theological question. That is, Yuvan Beg them that would still be understood by predicating another issue. Labim, we have to understand Masham Ruchazal Adam Nidon Bechol Yom Eidman Rosh Hashanah, the first period. That what that man is assessed and judged every day. Now this doesn't make too much sense. If you already judged on Rosh Hashanah slash Yom Kippur, what should the judge you more? What is the second judgment that you have a daily judgment? If your sustenance is basically set aside, they told you on Yom Kippur, by Nehilah, you got that one? Okay, we're signed. Okay, God put his John Hancock on the contract. You are going to get X amount of Parnassah V'chalkala. So what's the sweat? What, what, what do we need now? He's not going to retract. Lo Ishmi Chazev Kel. God knows and God says, yes, Jack, who you are, how I know you, after assessing you on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, you are worthy of X amount of dollars this year. Okay? So that, and this is for your parnasa. Okay? So then what's, what, what, what's this whole idea of having a special judgment every day? Here's another question. You say thrice daily, so you're fa'enu Hashem. You ask for health. Baruch Aleinu Sashana Zos means wealth. You want to have basically the you have produce well in an agrarian society. That meant you want a lot of rain and this harvest. In a, a world which is not an agrarian society, this also alludes to Parnasa. Mau in Yam Bakashazu. Me Achar Shikvan Niksava Kopi Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Didn't they? We said this in the Sanatoke thing. And we know, me, yeah, et cetera, me, the whole, I don't want to repeat it. It's a very morbid poem. I don't know why people like it. I mean, I, uh, it, it gets me very depressed. But it, it, yeah, they at least fill it out exactly what the, uh, everything. Parnasa, Chakala, Refua, health, wealth, and the pursuit of happiness. So everything's there already. So why are we asking it again daily, three times a day? What's the use? What can change? That's the question. It is obvious that there are different, uh, uh, there's something that can change and it can't be retracting. It can't be God saying, no, you ain't worth it. No, because God knew whether I'd be worth it or not. Okay, because God in heaven has the idea, he knows the future. And he, Apu Pitain was Maxif. He knew my past and he knew my future. He said, you for this year, this is what you're worth. Okay, this is what you'll get, rather. I don't, the word worth is not correct. This is what you'll get. Well, if that's the case, why do we have to ask for it every day? Yom Kippur. 
גם בזוהר, we also found in זוהר something very similar to זוהר in פרשת שמייס, in סייפר שמייס, very beginning. מצינו שרב אמנון הסבא היה מספר לחיים על מזיינה. He would pray every day for sustenance, for food. ולא היה אוכל טרם יתפלל, he would not eat before he would dive. Now we're also not supposed to eat before we dive. That's a din of loisa echlo al adav. That's a din to erisa, by the way. I never figured out. Right, people think because you're going to go davening with a 10 o'clock meal on Shabbos or a 9 o'clock meal on Shabbos, you can have a whole breakfast of cheesecake and danishes and five cups of coffee. Not sure, that, Believe me, they end up eating more before davening on Shabbos than I eat. At least breakfast, got no time for it. But somehow on Shabbos, we all eat these big breakfasts. It's a shtay. I'm not going into it. Don't want to. But you should know that eating before davening is an isidur isolation. Rama brings it in, in Sefer HaMitzvahs, for goodness sakes. The only had to eat before davening it because if you won't eat, you'll be, you won't feel well, you won't be able to concentrate in your davening. So if you feel that you eat the what is necessary to allow you to be comfortable to concentrate during your davening. Uh, but if you don't concentrate anyway, or you eat much more, I'd rather eat so much, you have a stomachache, you have no kaych to daven. I mean, you're really a very derisive. This is not a simple thing. You have to be very careful about that. But there's something else we're not talking about that he wouldn't eat before he prayed explicitly for food. <laughs> Why? Omar, he would say, I will not eat until I know this food came from God. And my prayer for food, and now I have food, I know this prayer, my prayer was answered, and God sent me this food. Now, uh, once again, this doesn't make sense. This is quite amazing. What do you mean? Everything's from God, man. Whether you prayed or not prayed, why would it make a difference? This can all be understood. The idea there's some kind of a, a, a signature, some kind of a, a you know, they, they put it in wax. So to speak, we know that it's signed up, and it's a signed document, the good old notary, you know what I mean? It's not signed up. There's a chasima on the on the psaq there. Now, what does it mean exactly, this chasima? So it says, a pirisha reads out, shram shachas heg vurs da atik b'malkos. Let me explain the concept, you know, in layman's language. Um, you know what happens is um, when, when God wants to create the world, Okay, what was the basic idea behind the world? Well, you know, he has an idea, and then he expressed it. What's the idea? What's his agenda? What does he want? So the Marsha already says this. The Marsha already says this, uh, talking about Bilam. The Bilam was Mechav and the Shah, which God gets angry, because why? Because he wants to be a Melech, Mem, Lam, and Chav, Moach, Lev, Kaved. It was a world in which intelligence reigned supreme. And then emotions, and finally experiential self, which is the the liver through the body, through the blood, and you know what I mean. And the opposite of a world which is really where, these, where God is a melech, equals intelligence is supreme. You have a pyramid, you have a flow chart in which the intelligence is on top, moa, and only afterwards lay, and afterwards kavei. You have the opposite. Most of the world lives with a feeling, first of all, um, bodily experience. This modern day and age, people would understand even more. Only afterwards, emotion. Uh, the women will understand that more how they relate to the males of the world. They think of bodily experience. The women think more of the emotion. Okay, they would expect that more. And it's, it's lacking. And who the the, the poor yosem at the end of the existence is called moyach, rarely used. Um, to the extent that use at all. Now the opposite of melech is kalem, destroy them. And that's exactly when God wants to be mayor of the day to say, I want to be a melech. He would, he would know to say, he's going to flip that minute. And that exact point, he's going to say, instead of melech, say kalein, destroy them. Because they are not worth it. They're not a vehicle for your malchus. Your malchus is moyach and only then lay, but only then kaveid. And these guys are living with a kaveid on top, again, a, 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 a material uh, pleasures, period. Not even emotional pleasures, just physical pleasures. And then finally, you know, in the pleasures of the flesh, if we may say. And then you have uh, lave, emotional things, emotional feelings, at least a nice touchy feeling, uh, ebbing, and, uh, you know, or whatever it only be. And then finally, mayach at the far end of the game. 
We know that the Ramban writes in Parshat uh, Bai that the only reason God created anything was for man to um, be a, to live in a total awareness that he's created the form of the infinite God. And God wants him to that low level to grow up and mature within himself and recognize that. He wants you to recognize and live by that ethos that you are a created form of God's infinite will. Literally. Like, I, don't, I don't think if anybody would see that in the mirror, you may have to be committed. But at least, uh, I mean, can you try to live your life with that ethos? That's what you are. You're not A, B, C, or D. You are a nothing more than you are an expression of and the justification of existence because God wants you to grow into understand, understanding that literally that you are a nivra of the infinite by rain. And by you recognizing that, that's called Kavit Shamayim. That's called you're recognizing the severity of God that He is the source of all. That's what you're, and that's when that becomes your ethos, and that's how you live, and, how, and that governs how you act. Here, this is called Kavit Shamayim. As the Pasik says in Yeshayah, Kol Anikir Vishmi, all called by my name, Lichvodi, was for my honor. Rativ, I, I, I created Yitzartiv, I formed it, Afasitiv, also, I also activated it. Literally says all, Isaiah says that all creation was created as a vehicle for Kavit Shamayim. God wants, for whatever reason it only be, Kavit Dafka from the lower echelons of the, uh, you know, it's like say the Medrash Tabchuma says, quoted from Tanya a few times, Nitavelo la Kadosh Baruch God had a obsessive desire almost, I mean, a logic which is not defined, in a, a will which is not defined by any logic accessible to us. That's why it's called a Taiva. Taiva means a logic which is not governed, a, a will which is not governed by logic. Now, it means to say, well, this is the will of the infinite, which because of this will, God created the concept logic. So obviously, this is a will that precedes logic. That's why it's called a Taiva. He wants to reside in the lower echelons of consciousness. He wants us, you, me, regular people, to live with that consciousness and God awareness. Literally, who are Sanu? He made us. And we are his. We are his. We are his nation because he's the creator and we are the created. So that's what God wants. That's called Melech. That's the Malchus of HaKadosh Baruch the realization of that dream. Now, that realization, that realization uh, came out in what? That was a that was the Chachma of the Ratzon HaKadosh Baruch So what he really wants to say, he wants to be a king. And one would say, I remember, so once a citizen, what was the Makshav of HaKadosh Baruch Ani Emloch. That's, I want to be a Melech. I want to be a Melech, so I need an Amu to recognize my Malchus. Okay, and that's what we're here for. Okay, why God wants to be a melech, I don't know. But he is an emotive behavior called malchus. Now, in order to be a melech, he has to do a lot of things. He has to create an unbelievable universe and a complex reality in which then there'll be a lower level of consciousness which will recognize it. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's like the supreme above all is creating an anthill and wanting the anthill to recognize the creator. So I can understand why this is called a taiva because it doesn't make too much logical sense. But that's what God wants. It's really very, sometimes I think of it like, you know, um, God wants us to praise him, right? Call on the Shemot, Hallel, call all of the Halleluka say, God, we'll praise God, praise God, praise You say Nishmat or whatever it is, you know, everything is Shvacha because it's both. And I look at this and say, what can we really uh, praise him with? We can praise him through our puny, little, uh, finite human experiences, which compared to the because there's so much more. So why would God want this? So I, sometimes I, I thought this, I think when I, when I, when we had children, so I still remember how, here I am, uh, rolling on the floor with this what this six-month-year-old toddler, and saying oh my my my, my and then waiting for him to smile, and when he finally says oh my my my, my to me, I'm beaming. Now believe me, he, we didn't talk about Aristotle's ethics at the time. Okay, he, he wouldn't. <laughs> I was talking baby gawk, uh, bah, 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 
and you get and when you get that smile, that angel face, and when they finally hear the uh, bah, 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 and then when they say Abba, you're dead. That's it. That does it. He doesn't even say what Abba means. He means it's a guttural sound, which somehow means you exist. You know what I mean? And you want that. Is it logical? Believe me, no. It's a prostatiber. <laughs> so I figured that God's the same thing. He created these little babies and he wants them to say, eh, bah, 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 bah. and that's my Torah and my mitzvahs. And, and he smiles. It's good for him. Don't, so that, and somehow I, under, I, can, I can identify with the taiva of creation. We also want little great children to do what? In the beginning, it's really a pleasure. All you got to do is roll on the floor with them and make these funny sounds. And so they become obnoxious teenagers to start telling you what to do. Then you got a challenge. Well, God has the same challenge <laughs> with us. We're the obnoxious teenagers. And you want the obnoxious teenagers to still say, ba, 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 ba. You know, that, that's what he wants. And we have to learn to do that. That's the idea we recognize that he's our creator. I'm just, I'm using this as a muscle to understand. So that's Mela, okay? Now, when God wants to be a king, what is? how did he create the world? By speech. He created the world by, by speech, which, which is a metaphor, obviously. He doesn't have a mouth, doesn't have a throat, doesn't have teeth and a lot, and, 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 you know, he doesn't have the hey, but so I don't you know, if you know the five uh, modes of, of letters that come, uh, this is a safety at Syria and Perry Base. The letters bet, vav, mem, pe, which come from the uh, mouth, Dal tet lamed nun taf come from the lung, from the shon, from the tongue. Zayin samu shin reish sadik come from the teeth. Gimel yud chof kuf come from the 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 palate, the chech. Okay, and alef chet ayin hey come from the throat. You want to you know? It's a dry sin. Say for your tzir paying base, you can look it up. Hey matzot ape. It's found in all your dictum books. For goodness sake, at least in the dictum books that I grew up with. Okay. Those are the, the, that's called the different uh, different sounds. You take the, the sound. The basic sound is the Chibur Siege Therapist. is strictly the Siege Therapist. Your basic sound is ah. You know that they can teach you how to how to, how to, how to talk. First, they make you do ah. Okay, I did this so because uh, I was very hoarse, so I had to learn how to talk. So the the basic sound, Mom should say for you, Siri, is the letter hey. That's what the teacher made me do. Ah. It's interesting to see that. that's the basic sound. Okay, then after this, how do you take those sounds and make them into letters? You go through different, is it stuff through the teeth, through the throat, through the, through the lips, through the mouth, you know, etc. These are the Heyman Sosapet. This is the way you divide the different, the different, the different, uh, I would say the, 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 the sound, the basic sound coming out of your vocal cords, th- uh, cords into making them into letters. There's guttural letters, there's tongue letters, there's throat letters, etc. You have different ways of moving them. What are you doing? You're taking the same vibrations and moving them through another tool, getting a certain type of a sound. So actually speaking, at least as far as Hebrew is concerned, it's hey, matzo, tapet. Now this is found also, the same thing Yitzhira says, that's also found in, so to speak, in the Elyonim. This gives us a lot of insight into the Kavanus of the letters, which is not just what we're teaching here. I just want to remind you, there's a beautiful book where of Cook on the letters, on the symbolism and the meaning of the letters. It's called Reish Milin, Reish Yud Shin, Mem Yud, Lamed Yud, Nun. A very, very esoteric book, but just a beautiful read. I think you have it even in English today with commentary worth buying. Take it from me. Okay. So, uh, the, the, this is a very important part in the insight into the letters is the Heimat Sotapet. These are the Hey Guru, the five limitations. What's Guru? The idea of Guru is the idea that God stops things. Ezekibor Hakovesh. For example, when God, uh, the, the God wants to say he is a flow of energy, he says, okay, but this energy will now be formed into a horse. This energy will be formed into a sapien. This energy will be this, a cat. What's he doing? He's taking infinite flow of, of, material, of will and giving it form. He's stopping a, a tidal wave of energy. He's saying, no, this is where it stops. It has a beginning, it has an end, it has a middle. That's called vura, kovesh. Uh, yes, when we talk about Yosef and Sadik, which withstood the test of, of Potiphar's wife. There was a whole emotional, physiological flow, and he stopped it right? a second before it was too late. You know what I mean? His brain was dead already, and he stopped it. That's called growth. Stopping 
a flow of energy, stopping a flow of happening. That's called gvurot. Uh, so hey gvurot, el yono, the ha, the, 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 the celestial five gvurot are parallel to the five motzaot hapeh, because they're taking the energy of God expressed in dibur, voice, and say, oh, well, this voice is going to be this word and this letter. This voice will be this word and this letter, and so on and so forth. So when he says over here, the idea being, what does that mean? It means the capability of Vurot lie in what you call the interactive persona of God. Atik is called the ancient one. God is called like the ancient mariner. He is the ancient one, the source of all. When we talk about the primary God of creation, before anything, you, they call him in Zohar, they call him Atik, Atik Yomin, the old one. The one that preceded all, okay? Atik. Hey, Grot Atik means God created within the primary primordial of God an interactive persona. There was Chachma, Bina, Das, Chesed, Gvura. Oh, what's that Gvura? In the, hey, the, the, the Gvura has five categories. Gvura was where God stems or puts constricts or puts limitation to his energies. That is defined, as we say, in the Bria by the Basar Mamarot Nivra Olam, by what? By Dibur. And therefore, we define the Gvurot by the Chemesh Motsaot which limit the sounds coming out of, so to speak, Ratzon Hashem, which comes through Dibur. Why is it called Dibur? It's called Dibur because, um, as the Tzamech explains in another Mimer, there's a difference between you formulating an idea in your mind and you articulating it. When you, there's also called by Daber El Libo. We have that by Homa. He spoke to himself. Now, when you El Libo doesn't mean he, he, he muttered in the street. There are some people you see, I said, old colleague, which, which talks to himself in the street. Okay, then to hate, you know, sometimes it's healthy, sometimes it's weird. Okay, you know, he argues with himself. It's really cute to see. Big time talk. Uh, but uh, normally it doesn't mean that. But Yidabel, Yibod, that means he thought. He thought when you when you think. My friends, we also put, we think in words. We think in symbolism. We think in ideas, which are sentences, ideas, words. It's not like a flow of infinite thought. It, you have symbolism. You think symbolism equals letters, words, or whatever it only be. You think the word cat. You may not see the letter cat in your mind, but you think the, the sound cat, okay? Therefore, you know it means that type of an animal. You think mouse or whatever you think. So there's also Dibur Shebelev, and there's Dibur Shebepet. What is the qualitative difference between them? Dibur, now, taking for granted that Dibur is a defined energy of God. So when God thinks something, you know, something that else, that, 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 that's a reality. But that reality is, so to speak, heard only by him perceived only by him and it is you know and what he thinks is what's there <laughs> so god's thought that i will be a king is what he thinks but then he speaks it when he speaks what is he doing he is now articulating into sounds which the he who hears or she who hears translates those sounds through their own private cultural background and they may actually hear those sounds totally out of context. <laughs> and then God says, I want to be a melech. It means I want you to understand me. And they think it means, oh, he wants to be like the king, Elvis Presley. He ain't nothing but a hound dog. I don't know, you know. <laughs> what does king mean? Man, he's the king. You know, it can mean so many different things in different cultures. Okay. And you can I create a world which is supposed to be expressing my intent, my my my, my multicolored wisdom and acts and the wisdom of science, etc. And you look at it as a place to have a party. So you've taken it out of context and given it your own meaning, which is many people do when they listen to my classes. I say X and I mean X. You hear words you take it into your context. That's what the Gemara says. It takes 40 years to understand not just what your Rebbe said, but what he meant. <laughs> I will sign on that. You have to know his body language and his and, and his thought process and his feelings, and then understand why he said it in this way and not that way. And most of all, uh, as a pun for Simon the God, we have to understand the sounds of silence. What did he not say? 
Believe me, that's probably the deepest thing you know. What he said is easy. What did he say? Why didn't he say X, Y, and Z? That's what you're supposed to figure out. And that you, a Talmud can understand, a real Talmud. Not a regurgitator of words and then they call himself, I did it, I'm a shamish, a sheer assistant, I don't know what. That's an Ishkin Talmud. The Talmud is what knows the thought process and the, and the emotional process of the teacher and can tell you what he's going to say somewhere, even if he didn't say it. Because he knows, he knows the mind, he knows the heart. Does he say Talmud? And that you get only Achei Abraham Shona. Well, that's the way it is. It's, it's Mamish. No. Mamish. So we understand that the idea of Dibur is the idea of the thoughts, which is the expression of the you. God's thoughts are, are he and his wisdom are one, is now being thrown into the sea, literally, of the, of the listeners, and they start writing critique. You know, and they start giving explanation to the God's creation, something totally devoid of him. Sometimes they even look at creation and say, we can prove that there is no God. You know, it's like, you know, you're taking a, a piece of art of Picasso and say, well, obviously we can see from here there is no Picasso. Oh, you don't even care about it. It's like many people read literature or even read Rishonim. I don't want to say this. Well, I will say it. And really don't care about the intent of the author. Well, it's terrible misconstruing. It's a historical fallacy. Uh, it, it's, I have, well, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm public here, so I'll keep my mouth shut. It is, it is far from intellectual honesty and far, far, far away. Sounds like Dickens, you know what I mean? Far, far, far away from anything called two tro scholarship. Okay, the maybes and the possibilities of which are not cut down into, into an honest attempt to understand the, the, the intent of the author. I have problems with even saying Birtza Taira on that. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, not, I don't think it's Torah. Okay. Uh, so one has to understand this. And that's when God said, this is the hate Gvuros El Yoinas. Now, those Gvuros are found in Malchus. What does Malchus mean? Malchus means say, God said, I want to be a king. So obviously, when he said, I want to be a king, so what he needed, he needed the meat of Gvura. That those cap the tools of constriction and form to be expressed in realization. Yeah, I'm, I'm realizing this world. I'm starting by a flow of energy, of mass energy. Now I have to bring the Gurusal Yonos in merging it with my will of realization to be able to form things because I, a, a massive energy without form will not be a Malchus. I have a, a will to be a Melech but I have to be able to employ my tools of form in order to make a complex world because my mouth was have to be the complex world. We're not just one big amoeba, okay? You understand, we're not just a massive energy. God wants a complex reality and in there for us to find him. So for that, you had to bring the hey, burr, sel, yoinais, of Atik into Malchus. Now we understand what those words of the are. It happens to be in Preetz Chaim Shari Yom Kippur, which we really want to know. It's in Preetz Chaim, it's in Preetz Chaim Gital. So Chasima, he's going to explain what this means practically. It's really important to know what happens at Nila. So what happens at Nila, the Ari writes, is that finally the forms of the energy put into place. Now, what energy is he talking about here? So first, let me explain, in, in, you know, orally, and then we'll see it inside. See, just like in the creation of the world, there was a mass flow of energy, and then God, as Ramban says, Rashid Barayalukim, he created two, four, two, two types of energy, heulic matter. Shemaim was called one, Aritz was called the other. And then for the rest of the week, he was a cookie cutter of using the egg burros and saying, this is going to be a horse, this is going to be a cow, this is going to be a constellation, this is going to be all these different things are employed, in the, it is called not bora, but actually osa. Okay, bria is yeshme ayin that happened on the first day. Afterwards, it's osa. So you must understand that every year, the same thing happens again. Every year, the same thing happens again, and God now wants, you know, whatever will there was for the world to be. It lasts for a year. After a year, God wants to know, do I really want to continue this? 
You know, as he starts on Rosh Hashanah, he says, yeah, I'm going to continue. It's out of inertia. I decided I want this. I'm going to keep it going. And every second, he asks, I'm going to keep it going. The ball stops in there. Rosh Hashanah says, well, why, 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 not to this test. Do I really want to do this? And just like then, uh, the Malachim asked him, why, why are you creating the world for man? Why would you care about man? So he says, well, that's the way it is. Well, now, too, he, he, he asks himself, um, okay, He's going to look into the words Nasa Adam and say, well, this guy worth having. <laughs> and the Mishmet of Rosh Hashanah is talking about humanity. Is humanity fulfilling its purpose, which is Malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Is each and every um, member of the species fulfilling his special purpose of Malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. God is asking Nasa Adam at the broad level. And he's asking Nasa Adam at every level, you, me, and everybody else. Nasa Adam is being asked literally on Rosh Hashanah. That's the birthday of man. That's when God says, well, I want to know. Without man, I'm not going to create the world. I only created the world for man. This time, beforehand, I, I figured I'm going to do it, you know, give him a break. Now, he looks at our record. He says, what's our track record? Do I want this guy on my team? Or maybe I don't want the team at all. Maybe it's a lost case. Well, obviously he doesn't think it's a lost case, thank God. But do I need you on the team? Or what What? Can, what are you worth doing on this team? Well, if you're not doing that job, I'll give you another job. And therefore you may have a, a different type of a lifestyle or a different type of health, different type of wealth, different type of happiness. It depends on what your job is going to be this year, heavily depending on what, how much you contribute to the broad idea of the team. How much do you fulfill your potential or your job with the toolcase that you were given when you were born? He put you with a certain capabilities, emotional, cerebral, etc., psychological, in certain situations. So what did you do with that? Or what, what promise do you have? These are the questions asked. And what happens at that stage? God says, uh, he looks at the world. Okay, the world as a world, I'm going to there's going to be a certain amount of mezainos, so to speak, cut to, set aside for chiyos ha'olamis. The world is going to get a certain, society is going to get a certain amount of mezainos this year. It's not, it's going to be drought, it's going to be rain, etc., 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 etc. Okay, that's good. That's the broad flow. But then there's another, that's what happens at Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah is decided, the Hague were signed, the, the, that's it. This is what we're getting. What's coming down into this world, into cat, mice, mis food, rain, health, wealth, all these different types of chasadim are defined. You're going to have X amount of health, X amount of rain, X amount of food, X amount of uh, shalom, X amount of milchama, whatever it's going to be. And those are the gvuros, those are the Hague gvuros, which come down, and, and, and it's, now it's, inside, it's signed. In other words, the broad flow of energy has now definitions. There's going to be X amount of Parnasa, X amount of Tzorah V'yog and Vanacha, X amount of Simcha, X amount of whatever you have over there. What happens is that the Hague, that's what they reset, that the Hague Vuros, the categorization of the massive energy is now defined in different things. That will never change. In other words, yes, of the flow of Chius that the world is going to have for the coming year, the, I want the world for another year, it's divided what is going to get what, where, but not to the private people, but for the broad world. Not just for this world, for all the olamos, for olama and the shamais and olama and malachim. There's a whole spiel. It all depends on us. If we don't do well here, the me the shamais and ganeden are having a lousy year. It all depends on us. We decide what everything is going to look like. Okay, that's very nice. That's all. For uh, th that, that's the idea of Kutsu. Re Rebbe? Yeah. Uh, quick, quick, quick question. So, it, does that mean that there's um, it's sort of a zero sum game once this is defined and Tosefes Veribui is. Only we'll see in a minute. That is, take, let, let's say, for, first of all, ah. this is defined, period. It's defined in a separate categories. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not the chiyut, energy. But energy, God, energy can transfer. It can be translated into money. Can be translated into health. Can be translated into multiple things. We have a very complex reality, and there's a lot of things which have to be given existence to. So, how much of that heat is going to go into, I don't know, solving COVID? 
cancer. I don't know what. Think of it. And how much is going to go? Is there going to be how much dash? God decides how much dash is going to be in this world for this year. How much of that is going to further science and how much is going to go well into engineering? That's also decided. Okay, but they haven't decided who gets what. You've only decided the mass of reality. Now, there's another question. Daily, we ask you, John, Harry, what are you worth? How much of it you uh, is going to be translated into your private world, into Bane Chaye Mizoyne Ravicha? That depends on who you are on a daily level. So when we say Mizanos of Shalom Ketsuvah it doesn't mean to say that all goes to you into what's called Parnasa. No. It depends how much you are. You know what? Maybe you're not worthy of Parnasa because of what your station in, in Ruchnis is, but what? We'll give you a bit more of health or a little more of whatever it be or whatever it will. You know, there's a there's game here, and that's a daily question. And that's why every day we pray, Rafa'enu, Barachalenu, etc., because God's now looking at us, not within the broad, Kulam Niskorim, Biskira, Achas. Uh, you know, you know, they all look at it once and he judges this to the world. No, 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 no. That's what Shani and Kippur. You personally, every day we see. What are you worth today? How much today should you be getting? What, and this literally changes on a daily level. More than just on a daily level, literally every hour of time. That's why we have Dabi three times. And each time we say, Rebbeinu Baruch Aleinu Atachin Ladim Das. How much das will you have today for whatever you feel you need? That depends who you are and what you are at that stage of the game. So let's read this now again. Okay, now I'm going to read it inside. It's a very important Nakuda. Hapirish kach. What is the idea of the hey gvuras to atik b'malchus? I think I explained it clearly. So here he says, it is called known of Rosh Hashanah and Nimshach chiyut klali me'en sof baruchu. Is a general mass of energy of energizing the existence of all from the infinite. To give existence to all multiple levels of consciousness from Olam on the Shamas, Olam on to good old our world the way we know it. Al Shonazu for this year. Shekal Ha'arm Yishana Shavra. I want you to know this. All the reason of, of existence, the light, so to speak, God emanating himself, therefore giving and energizing us of last year, excuse me, it goes back to its source. In other words, let's think it in a thought process. In a thought process, I have an idea, which is a theoretical idea, and then I think of how to realize it. I use practical tools. Practical tools are called realization. We called it the sphere of Malchus, realization. Because for God's realization is having his kingdom. So we want to talk about me realizing parallel to the realizing of God's degree. We call it Malchus. It means Akshama. But we used to call that when we were kids in the Akiva. Okay, Akshama. Okay, that's what it was. So that's Akshama. But you know, we all understand the true Hagshama is only as long as the Rayon is there. If you become devoid of the ideal, the Hagshama is no more Hagshama. It's not realizing a dream. You're just into it. You, you do things by rote and you lost it. I hate to say it, you know, sometimes I think about the youth in Eretz Israel today comparing to what it was when I was a kid. Are you kidding, man? I got off the plane, you kissed the tarmac. <laughs> you came to Eretz Israel, you know. You know, the, the, the first week, yeah, I went up in Tel Chai to see Triple Door's grave, you know. <laughs> How could you not? If I ask a kid in Cape White to get me a Triple Door, I promise you they won't know. I mean, I sometimes laugh. I grew up, ah, you know, all that stuff. And these guys, they don't even know, they don't even know what Jubatinsky was, I'm willing to guess. You know what I mean? It, it, ask, you see, if you ask the little kid in Ranada, Tomorrow, or on shops. Who is your Sif Trumpeldor? I'm telling you, you're not going to get too many answers. 
Okay, then the guys don't even know why they're here. They don't know all the rayon that you need. I hate to say it. I think it's only left in the, the world that you me world. You know, that, that that's the only place where we actually talk about it and advocate it and, and give it the logical meaning. It's dead. So and you tell Kshama. The la the Dabonemi follow Akshama. Then I say stop. It's a Kadosh Boko and Kazima. And I see ya Shaina had Shamash Rayon the Ratso. God is a super idealist. <laughs> he does not do unless because he, he expresses a will, an ideal, and a war. So what happens is the will that he has for being Makshim is for a year. Afterwards, that goes back to its source. In other words, there is no more Akshama. Akshama chuzeret l'amako. L'an ma makom shel Akshama. Ha-chatzon. Ha-chokma. It goes back. Okay, we're not doing anything yet. Let's first assess if we want to do this again. That's what it says that in Rosh Hashanah. What happens is that the or mishanash ram bistalek l'shor shor. What does that mean? Goes back to its source. It's very simple. The idea of, of materializing, realizing, goes back to its original source. Do I want it or don't I want it? I first need a reason to do that. I don't do things with my rote. It goes back. And that's the point in time where God says, okay, now let's reassess. Do I really want it? Then I'll do it. And that's what it means. You know, without explaining this, this sounds like a bunch of gibberish. It it goes up. Lishar show to its root. What is the root of realization? Thought and ideal. Here he means to say something beautiful because this is about Mercedes. That just as physically, this is the only yomtiv, which the only yomtiv we have, which is on Rish Chodesh. On Rish Chodesh, there is no reflection at all of the sun's light on the moon. It's only we well, most of our yom time are the fifteenth day, which the moon is is full moon, because that's when the sun is really the or is there. Symbolically, we Rosh Hashanah is the time where there is no more or, there's no more light. God is not. It, it, it's like darkness. You know, there's no chachma v'kadosh baruch being expressed. No, we're in recess. We now have to think: Will there be light here, or won't there be light here? That's metaphorically, that's the idea of why Rosh Hashanah is on the Rosh Chodesh, because it's Talkuta or we're taking we're going back. We don't even, we don't have the Chachma of creation. No, we first have to find out do I want this? Uh, or Mr. Lech, there is no expression of or at the moment, because that is now in judgment. That's now on trial. Will there be or or won't there be or? Will the light of God reflect itself on the recipient, which is who? The moon. Or will it not reflect itself on the recipient, the moon? That is why, if you want to know, in, once again, in Kabbalah, the moon is called Nekeva, recipient. The moon is called Sfirat HaMalchut. Once again, the realization of the light reflected into realization called the, of the darkness, which is called the moon. So that's Rosh Hashanah. Sha'or Shishana Shavam Misalek Lishosho Be'er Rosh Hashanah. Sha'achodesh Mitkasebo. This is Bakesel Yom Chagenu. So to speak, that the new light is still hidden. Listen carefully. Very important to know this. What happened in Tzom? It's because it's Kiat Shofar, whatever we do there, and Tfilot, whatever you do, Nimshach or Chadash, a new enlightenment comes, so to speak, on this moon. La'ir la'aretz el Yonah, and this enlightens the higher, the beginning of the dimensions of, of creation. This is an inference to a Ramban. The Ramban writes in Parashat Reshit that many times when it says Ha'aris in Parashat Reshit in the beginning, it does not mean the earth the way we know it. It means Ha'aris el Yona, Shuhu Hasiba La'aris Atachtona. Tatsheya Aritz Deshe, so look at the Ramban there, it says it means Ha'aris el Yona. Whatever Aretz and Desha means in the metaphysical reign. And once there's Desha there, this will be expressed also in the Aretz, Hatachtona, and the grass that you see. But things start with things happening up in the metaphysical reality. And afterwards, they're translated into a physical reality. It's like thinking physics, thinking abstract 
ideas of physics. And then tra- at the end of the day, that's that's expressed in that faucet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, you, so a plumber will exp- will enjoy the faucet. But the man of physics will understand the wisdom which afterwards came into expressing that faucet. Who gives that? Not a faucet, not a chamina for a faucet. It's a marshal to a chachma. You know what I mean? Sometimes you think like these guys want pots and pans. I'm like, you can there's brilliance in this, okay? You look at a bridge, you go, wow, it's a great bridge, a lot of GW bridge, a lot of traffic. But you know what it took in the chachma following the construction of that bridge? It's a million times more than any of the traffic going on, and believe me. Depends where your mindset is, right? So it starts, I would tell you not. The GW started with the great ideas of engineering. And reality is, thank God we have traffic so we can move from Jersey to, uh, to, to Manhattan and back and forth. Okay? So this is the idea here of this going to Eretzel Yonah. Let's read the words again. To Gashifar. Mimshach or Chadash La'ir La'Eretzel Yonah. Hu Bechinat Malchut. This means the beginnings of realization. And here I have to explain something. It means that once again, let's look at uh, me thinking and then saying and doing. Okay, I have this great inspiration. And I really now have to figure out, I have to think not only of theoretical words, I have to think of ways of materializing. But it's still theory. I had this great dream. I want a house. I want a domicile. I want some, a domain for my family. So I got a million ideas. I have to make sure my kids are happy. My wife is happy. My dog is happy. And I also like to be happy or whatever it only be. Okay. So you have this basic idea. Now you got to translate that. Well, if you're building it on your own, you have to think You have to think in terms of, uh, of realization or at least hiring a contractor. Or, or, or if not, thinking about the plumbing, the electricity, the mason work, the woodwork, etc. There's a lot of work to do. Okay. Uh, you also need interior designing. There's a lot of things, a lot of chachma there. This, this will has to be expressed in a lot of disciplines. Now, once it's been distributed to the people which have the disciplines, or maybe you are the multidisciplinary person yourself, no, you actually have to do it. <laughs> it's not enough to have the capability of, of, of materialization. You know, you also have to do it. And that's a chachma for itself. Sometimes you have great theoretical masons, but I need someone which actually can lay a brick and do it right in the right form or shape. So there's different levels of this. So you have here, originally, wisdom goes down into the mode of behavior called practicality. That's malchus fa'aretzel yonah. The highest level is when you think, you think, now think, how, how would this be practically? Afterwards, once you have this, now translate that practical reality into the nickels and dimes of realizing things. It's more than just, I, I'm a practical person. We also have to have to explain, okay, not take your practicality, say how much cement do I need and how much uh, lime do I need and how much woodwork do I need and so on and so forth. So there's always malchus, realization at multiple levels. Like you have the realization at the level of the CO and you have the realization at the level of the department head and you have the realization at the guy in the warehouse. They're all different levels and we need all of them. But there are different levels of malchus, different levels of we're, we're, we're trying to live out the great idea which was behind it. Realize this. That's what he says, this malchus of our town, you're not. And that afterwards has to be translated in malchus in this world that you and me exist in. So those are the words that he says. Um, again, I did catch your father, you know, in shock or Kadash, like you, our town, you're not. He bechinat malchut. When God moves from will into will of practicality, now God actually wants this to happen. Okay, I have this will. Roshani and Kippur, the Tfilis Roshani and Kippur. I actually do want to continue the world. And now I'm going to take the energy and make it practical, make a world out of it. Well, there's a big grow from the from Malchus Eretz El Yonah so it comes down to Eretz El From the idea of the board's decision to the CO's decision, to the department head decision, to the guy in the warehouse, there's a long road. At the end of the day, the client is going to get it. Thank God to all that, if that flows efficiently, then he's going to get exactly what he wanted and the company will get what it wants. If there's a rupture there, someone's dream will not be realized. Let's be honest. So here the key is, what is the structure? 
from Aristotle, you're not machut until what we get, you know, in our uh, breakfast box next morning. That's our real question. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here and we'll continue this next week, next, next two weeks, whatever it is. Okay, we finish with the word Aristotle, you're not. I'm going to stop it right here. Okay. Um, I will not be here for um, the Sunday after Mishpatim. I'm going to be in Los Angeles by you, Alan. Actually, I'm going to be, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, what date is that? I'm just going to put that down on the calendar because we have to, what date is that? I am not going to be here. On, um, That's the 19th? You said Michelle? Uh, February 12th. We have time. Oh, that's February 12th, I, yeah, I, I actually suggested to speed that we do this here live here in LA, oh. but I guess you're taking an early morning yeah. flight, Sunday morning. Daniel, I have an 8.45 flight in the morning. Right. From, uh, from <laughs> that's, that's what he said. Right. You'll be poofing on Sunday morning, and I will be in a plane. <laughs> Okay. I have a speaking engagement in Chicago that afternoon. If I lose three hours by flying, remember? Okay. And I got to be on a plane trip to Israel on next on, the, on Monday. You understand? So uh, this is a whirlwind. What don't we do for Caribbean? <laughs> it'll, it'll look like a tiny minute. One day in New York, Keenek, Riverdale. Next day in Baltimore. The next day morning, flight to LA, which is Friday or Thursday. And then it'll A until uh, in, until Sunday morning, then off to Chicago, from Chicago the next day to the, to, 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 to Israel. And then fall into Sheer. You understand how it works? <laughs> and I'm retired, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Rabbi. Take care. Have a thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. So much. Uh, Thanks so much. Thank you. Be well.